not be much fun to play with. City that goes great with plenty of booze. It's late night with David Letterman. Tonight, actor Paul Reiser, musician Jimmy Cliff, New York giant Your Nitmo, the world's oldest acrobats, Ronaldi and Karina, and viewer mail, plus Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous man. And now, a man who got tossed out of the Vatican Embassy in New York for frying bologna in his room, David Letterman! As you may or may not know, for the last couple of weeks, my Uncle Ray has been living with me. Now, Uncle Ray, yeah, Uncle Ray is, has been with the circus all his life, and so I was concerned because we come from two different backgrounds. But it's working out pretty good so far. Ah, the only problem, I guess, every time he hears a siren, he starts howling. But other than that... <laughs> I have no idea. You know, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, today a frustrated President George Bush threatened to cancel Manuel Noriega's CIA pension. So I think... Uh, you know, did you hear about this? Dinty Moore. I think this was, this, this tells a lot about uh, what a great land we live in. Dinty Moore was finally uh, invited to a reception at the White House. Uh, last night it took place, and he attended, uh, and I guess it went all right. However, an inside source claims that Dinty Moore will never be invited back to the White House because he was too gassy. Oh. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, it's nights like this, I wish we had celebrities in the audience I could introduce to you at home. But we don't. We just don't. Who could I introduce? You know, Paul, from the world of sports? Wouldn't that be nice? No, we don't have any here tonight. No, no. No, no. <laughs> what? This is... All right, hold on, wait a minute. All right, hold on. Thank you. Ken Martin, America's fastest marathon runner, right up there. This is uh, this is our guitarist Sid McGinnis. He was in the marathon. Did you see him? Last year. Yeah, last this year. year. I had the same clothes as you. <laughs> and where did you finish? Well, that's where the uh, similarity ends. Okay, goodbye. Bye, Sid. There you go. Ah, well, now. Drive safely. Good night, everybody. God bless you. You know, on the... Uh... Well, you're a busy little fellow over there tonight. <laughs> I'm working. I'm working. I appreciate it. Uh, on the uh, program tonight, Paul Reiser is here, a very funny man, and also... Uh, has his own, you know, his own TV show. And uh, Jimmy Cliff will be joining us.
And the list, the list just, the list literally keeps going on and on. Uh, we'll have the world's oldest acrobats. And, and ladies and gentlemen, the reason we've doubled security tonight, Bjorn Nitmo. What a show, what a show. Thank you very much. Nice to see you, Paul. You look terrific. Thank you. I'm expanding my look. Now, you know, the next time we see one another here on the magic of television, magic, hell, the miracle of television, Yeah. it'll be a whole different uh, set of numbers. It'll be 1990. That's right. It'll be January something, 1990. 1990. That's stunning, isn't it? That we've it been is. doing it this long. Still, however, the decade won't be over. No, the decade does not end until the end of 90. Until the, the end 80s, of 90. The 80s are over. Yeah. 80s is over. 80s are over. The 80s are Doc over. Doc is here. Doc's not here. Doc is, Doc is not here. And, and now... And when we come back, what, what, is, what is your pledge for the new year? Uh, I pledge to be just a... Uniforms for the band, Paul. All right, uniforms. <laughs> uniforms for the band. Now, were you thinking of sending us over to Seville Row and having suits tailored for us? No, not, not necessarily, but that might be a look we would see one night. Yeah. But like what you're wearing this evening, I think, would be acceptable. For everybody? Yeah. Yeah. That's for everybody. Yeah, that's for everybody. All right. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Not yeah. hats like that. No, I don't think so. And perhaps no berets, although right. Anton, it's <laughs> nice. It's nice. <laughs> and, and have you made any resolutions for the New Year? I haven't as yet. Mm -hmm. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? Oh, yes. More fun salads. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, let's do our top ten list. We have such a big show, I have to keep rolling right along here. The category tonight, Manuel Noriega's top ten New Year's resolution. <laughs> you know, you know, Paul, he's down there in the papal nunciature he's in down Panama in the City. He is yeah. in the nunciature yeah. there. Yes, he is he in is not in the nunciature. In nunciature. He no, he is there. He yeah. is in uh, he's seeking asylum, I guess. Refuge, political so asylum, whatever. Yes. Anyway, uh, top ten uh, New Year's resolutions. Number ten, no more declaring war on really big countries. Uh, number nine, call that guy I know at Jacobian Myers. Number eight, find out if Revlon makes a spackle. Number seven. Uh, number seven, send Hallmark's most expensive friendship card to President Bush. Uh, here's a good one. Number six, get New York City taxi license. There you go. Uh, number five, find a travel agent who can work a little faster. Number four, uh, get in touch with my last friend in the world, Nikolai Ceausescu. Uh, too late, pal. They, friends of the Ceausescu's, were you? Uh, number three, when all this is over, send Pope a thank you kilo. Number two. Uh, number two, don't trust anybody talking about a kinder, gentler nation. And Manuel Noriega's number one New Year's resolution, make reservations for hell. Cute. See, that's very cute. Very cute. We're talking about resolutions, resolution, and then we have revolution. revolution. Very cute. Ball. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. Always thinking. Thank I appreciate you for that. Noticing. Thank you. Busy. Busy work over here. Ah, more fun salads for the 90s. Yeah, that would be a good idea. You know, I have this car phone that the staff gave me for Christmas. We, we all chipped in for that. Yeah, I know. How much, by the way, did you chip in? I put in, uh, I think, you either, 10, the dial either tone. 10 or $20. I'm not really? exactly sure. Thank you very is. much. How terribly sure. generous. Thank you. <laughs> Salvation Army got more from you. Um, well, there are so, so many. So now, you in, know there what are it's so done. many in need this, <laughs> this holiday season. So now what it's done, it's yeah. made my life a little more easy. On the other hand, it's also made the work of the Connecticut Highway Patrol much easier. Because when I'm speeding, they just phone now. I see. <laughs> phone in the summons. That's right. They don't have to get out of the car. They don't have to flag me down. No messing around with roadblocks. Good. Here we go. Our viewer mail, ladies and gentlemen. We've been answering our viewer mail. Mm -hmm. 
Number one, Dear Dave, The Tonight Show had its biggest audience many years ago with the Tiny Tim marriage episode. Has there ever been a wedding on your show? Your pal, Reverend G, Roland Heights, California. Uh, this is a great letter. Uh, unfortunately, Reverend, uh, we've never really had a wedding on the show. However, we are doing something very special tonight that I think is really going to boost the ratings pretty good. For the first time ever on network televisions, one of our stagehands, Al Marr, is going to get his fishing license. <laughs> As county clerk, it gives me great pressure to give you this permit, which allows you to fish anywhere in New York State. Th thank you, Her Grace. This is the proudest day of my life. <laughs> Nice job, Al. Thank you very much. This, this is how it was rehearsed all damn day. Thank you, Your Highness. And you, you changed it to Your Grace? I slipped up a little. Oh, you slipped up a little. <laughs> I can hardly wait for the 90s. Uh, dear Dave, uh, number two begins, I just moved into a new apartment and I'm having trouble taping your show with my VCR. I think that the problem has something to do with the decoder box. Uh, can you tell me the proper way to hook up a VCR to a TV with a decoder box? Joe Wolf, Coconut Creek, Florida. Sounds like a lovely community, doesn't it, Paul? Paul? It sounds like that, exactly like that, yeah. <laughs> Already planning the uniforms, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, sure, Joe, I understand your frustration. Uh, hooking up a VCR can be quite complicated. Uh, let me show you what I found to be true in uh, the case when you're trying to hook it up. Uh, really, there's only one thing to remember. You have to take the input from the uh, VCR and make sure that that's hooked up to the output from the decoder box. And then that will... Uh, uh, no, wait a minute, that's wrong. No, no, no. It comes from the decoder box, the output, into the input of the VCR. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure now, but it's just these two cables. And I'm just going to go ahead and... This was a dramatization to show you what can happen if you screw around with cable equipment. Remember, the only person authorized to change wiring on a converter box is a technician from your local cable company. Never attempt it yourselves, unless, of course, you're one of those electronics geeks. Now back to Donnie the Joke Boy and his late-night comedy carnival. Thank you, Your Highness. <laughs> Through the magic of television becomes, thank you, Your Grace. <laughs> uh, letter number three. Dear Dave, is Will Lee's instrument even plugged in? Will Lee, of course, is our fine bass player and the wealthiest man in show business. Uh, the letter continues, I think he's faking it. Please check into this and get back to me. Curious, Brian J. Bancroft, Laguna Beach, uh, California. Also a lovely community. Uh, Will, what's the deal? Your, is your instrument plugged in there? Yeah, Brian, uh, my instrument's plugged in. If you don't believe me, just ask your wife. Hi, Bob. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Tom. Thanks for coming by. Happy New Year. Thank you. Same to you. We were doing that backstage, yeah, too. On behalf of all, us, all of us at NBC, I'd like to present you with this Humanitas Award. Oh, thank you. For giving other members of your staff the opportunity to make cheap jokes about a certain part of the male anatomy. I think you know what I mean. Uh -huh. The Johnson, the old rattlesnake, the Jones, the python, the power cable, the tool, the plow horse. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert C. Wright. Thank you very much for dropping by. Pride, the Big Dipper, the old Remington, Judge Roy Bean, the Swizzle Stick, the Big Noise from Lamecca, <laughs> So far, it's going better than we ever dreamed it would. <laughs> Very entertaining. Did you see that memo, by the way, from the NBC News people? No, what was Beginning that? Beginning Monday, Deborah Norville is Debbie Norville.
Really? That came out officially? I have to call her Debbie from now on. I'll be glad to call Debbie her. Debbie Norville. Yeah, I thought that was odd. They put her in a memo out like that. Interesting, uh, yeah. yeah. Letter number four. Uh, more fun salads. <laughs> Dear Dave, uh, what were you arguing about with... What were you arguing about and with who as you made your entrance on your November 29th show? Hope there isn't a bloodless coup in progress. Signed a concerned viewer, Richard Paxco, Ludlow, Massachusetts. You know, I remember this night, uh, Richard. I was furious. Uh, the deal was somebody had broken a promise to me that they had made, and believe me, you're right, all hell broke loose. In fact, when I think about it now, my blood really starts to boil. You lying weasel, I'll have your job for this. You're ruined. I'm telling you, that pizza took 40 minutes to get here, and I'm not paying for it. You're nuts. I got here in 25 minutes. Pay up, deadbeat. Dick, who you call a deadbeat? You're taking that truck. You'll be delivering balloons to party when I get not proud of that behavior. That's it. That's our viewer mail. That's the last segment of mail for the 80s. We'll be right back with Paul Reiser. program we have a uh, we have a fine fine television program for you coming right into your own home there uh, at no cost to you uh, our first guest uh, is uh, one of the stars of the uh, comedy series my two dads right here uh, on NBC what night is that on uh, Morty huh huh Wednesday night right here on NBC thank you your highness please welcome back to this program Paul Reiser Paul Nice to see you. Thank you very much for being with us. Well, it's certainly my pleasure to see you. The Dr. end of Letterman. the 80s. Happy the end of the year. 80s. Happy holidays to you. Happy holidays, happy Christmas, happy New Year. It's just, there's too many things going on this week. You don't know how to <laughs> greet people. Happy, happy holidays. I, I get, I, when people send cards, it's always right. a big dilemma, you know, because people send Christmas cards and some people you want to send Hanukkah cards and then you want to send, you don't want to get too religious either way. So people have developed this thing of happy, happy holidays or seasons greetings. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this means. It's just... It's greetings. It's not even happy. It's just, how are you? That's basically it. It's a, it's a greeting. It's that. And season. Could apply to any of the four seasons. Exactly. But you get it in the winter, which basically just to remind you that it's winter. It's sort of a vague salute to winter is what it is now. It's just, <laughs> it's just a reminder to your friends that it's cold. That's the whole thing, you know. So you get cards, you know, from our family to your family, take a sweater. That's it, you know. It's just... Now, your family and your loved ones, salt the walk. That's basically what it is. Just <laughs> to remember that it's winter. That's but you know, if that is what it's coming to, even that wouldn't be a bad idea. What, I mean, because it's a nice, friendly sentiment. Well, yeah, but then you should get them all the time. You know, well, like that's what In July, you know, check the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. But you don't get cards. It's only <laughs> this season. I mean, you know, I like, I like autumn a lot. I don't get a card. I don't know why. Yeah. Just look outside. <laughs> it's autumn. Thank yeah. you for the reminder. Now, you're, uh, you're spending some time here, uh, obviously spending a few minutes I'm in town. I'm spending as little as I can. No, I'm... Uh, it's crazy. I mean, you go outside. This is the week to be mm -hmm. in Rockefeller Center to see the tree. Have yeah. you seen it? You have oh, yeah. to see the tree. So, of course I saw the tree. It's a beautiful it's tree. It's like 100 yards from here. Of course I've seen the tree. <laughs> but you're a busy man. You, you walk out a lot of times. We, we had a big uh, Christmas party a week ago on the uh, skating rink down there, and that's really where you should see the tree. Did you see From skate? that vantage. Of course we skated. Yeah. Well, no, you, you specifically. Yes, I skated. That's all I'm asking. I have guys. I have guys who move me around the ice. <laughs> Did you have professional ice, skates? Because you can get those, those you know, the double the, the blades. Runners? No, the Hans I Brinker the double, kind No, of. I didn't have the little Hans Brinker deals. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Just, a lot of times, if you don't want to do the actual skating, you can get those the little pallets on your feet. I don't know. I didn't have those. guys will push it, yeah. but you didn't. That's all. <laughs> yeah. not, not making any... Uh, At know. one time, there was talk of me being drafted by the Blackhawks. <laughs> really? Yeah. But then they... <laughs> Never happened. No. no. I see. I decided I wanted to be TV boy, so I came to New York. <laughs> <laughs> and you happy now? Yeah, I'm very happy now. Well. Yeah, that's right. That's good. I just, I just love seeing everybody outside. It's amazing. This is the only tree. By the way, I'm what? sorry I interrupted. I segued him. No, I moved. <laughs> no, forgive me. I went without you. It was it's great. Our last show of the decade. Go for it. I'm sorry. Is that it? So I'll I could quiet. stay on. I could be the last guest oh, of the decade. Oh, sure you could. <laughs> 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 I won't, but I'm saying, if, say I decided to put on some sort of, you know, exercise of... A filibuster. A filibuster, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, well, there's not a chance in hell of that happening now. <laughs> so sort of stick to my little times yeah, and get my do. little jokes yeah, in. Yeah, do your I little see. skit and get out. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. Forgive maybe we can me, just come up, go yeah, over no, some of those Blackhawk Hawk references. Here, for, here we, that's like a big bite. Here right we go. There. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, the only thing I was going to mention, uh, and of course it has less less import now, was. Uh, <laughs> Was the whole Black Hawk skating thing? I, I felt okay with it. I, got, I want to say that I felt good. You, yeah. you you took it a different way. Okay, now we're back but to the good. tree. You brought up the tree. That's where we all went south. We all. That's so why I'm trying to steer yeah. clear of that okay. tree now. Yeah. No, I. Uh, <laughs> the tree. It's a beautiful tree, and it's just it, to me. I think that's for a tree growing up. It's like the main gig to get. This is like you know for, to be in Rockefeller. Oh, yeah. Every tree, I think. Yeah. You know, in Vermont, grows up and says, "I just want to make it in a big yeah. apple." You Something know, the to lights, shoot for. Sure. Yeah. The tinsel, the lights, it's a, you know, it's a lot of, lot of competition to get that. Oh, yeah, really. so. A lot of, lot of competitive bark stabbing to get, you know, to go on it. <laughs> and um, what's amazing, though, know, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excuse me. He interrupted with the Blackhawk story. <laughs> I had a momentum going. You would have enjoyed that little bark stabbing reference if not for his Blackhawk reference. Yeah, but you don't, so don't understand. Me. This is the man you Bef want to talk to. Before the show, I passed out favors, <laughs> so they're they're going to be on our side. That's right. And you're here next year, and I'm necessarily not necessarily. <laughs> you're welcome here any night of the week. Really? Yeah. Any decade. Yeah. It's good to know. <laughs> let's do it. I tell you what. Let's do a, a commercial, we'll and then uh, we'll come back more and talk more about the big skating party we have. And uh, from the New York Giants place kicker, Bjorn Nitmo. Yeah! <laughs> it's fun to say, I Bjorn Nitmo. I just for that reason. Uh, now, here's the question you get a lot uh, this time of year, and I don't think it makes uh, as much sense as it one time might have in the American scheme of things, but New Year's resolutions, do you make them? I, I do, but, you know, everybody makes them, and then they get disappointed because next year they, they fail, and, right. and then they're miserable. So my I think the way to do it is... Be real, because you, know, you look at all the things you want to change about your life, and then you go, geez, you know, it's overwhelming. You go, if I'm going to change all that, I, you know, I might as well change my name, move to another country. You know, it's just mm -hmm. too many sure. things that you don't like. Yeah. So the way to do it, and then you get depressed when you fail. So make, I feel, make resolutions that you feel you can accomplish. Mm -hmm. I, I made a list. I just I jotted. That's a good point. Yeah, because that way, even you know, it may not be a big deal, but you've done it, and you mm -hmm. feel good about sure. yourself. For instance, I decided 1990. You know, it's funny you mentioned because I jotted I had them thing. down. Yeah. I did. <laughs> because you want to do things, I did. Mention Blackhawks. No, that's yours. Wait a second. No, so for instance, 1990, I decided is the year that I personally am going to eat less mango. You know what I mean? There you go. I don't enjoy mango yeah. in the first place, so it's no skin off my yeah. back. You know what I mean? You, you'll, you'll feel better when you accomplish that. Exactly. Yeah. I know I can do it. This is the year I'm going to see less of Europe and stay in this country every day. So spend more time in the United States. Exactly, and not travel. Yeah. That's my goal for this year, because <laughs> otherwise you say, oh, I forgot to get to Europe. And then you feel terrible. Exactly. Yeah. The well, pressure. See, the, the pressure, exactly. My point is a whole list. I just The burden I, of personal the burden failure. Of, are you exactly yeah. with me on this day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to give you a big wet kiss right now. No, no, please, 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 please. Just to sort of put a stop to this right now. So, Dave, not in a sexual way, just in an annoying way. So, how but, could it be anything else coming <laughs> from you? <laughs> I don't know. No. I don't know. I'm just, sorry. Just it's just one of those things. I know. I, I'm sure. very excited because Mr. Nitmo is Oh, I understand. Yeah. Believe me. I'm going to sit right here for Nitmo. All right, let's go on. I'm sorry, Paul. There's a very good chance that these will all fall straight to hell. Can I tell <laughs> no, you that? This, no, this no, no. go right in the toilet. But there are many things that I promised. Right. A lot of things that are not necessarily bad habits, but things you weren't going to do anyway. For instance, I decided in 1990, I'm going to write no books slandering or blaspheming the people of Islam. I feel for me. That's, you know, <laughs> a smart move. Yeah, it is yes. a good move. And uh, at no point will I put on a pair of uh, buckskin lederhosen and sing Jerry Vale songs. Because <laughs> I feel it's not something I'm not, you know, I'm not going to do it anyway. That's so again, right. exactly. the year comes, yeah. I succeeded. Because who needs the pressure of personal failure exactly my point David. <laughs> yeah. now there are many other resolutions that you make things that you don't have they're not bad for you but you uh, want to cut right. them out because they annoy other people that's for right. instance I decided 1990 that's the year I'm gonna stop pointing out the fact that the human body cannot fully digest corn see no a lot of people you know because exactly my point it's annoying so why bring it up you see what I'm saying there are many other things 
these are these are exactly why I want to cut them out. You're exactly <laughs> along my thinking. Now, there's another thing and that I want to cut out. Thank God you jotted them down. I did. <laughs> <laughs> now, no, but there are a lot of things. You know, it's not an important one. But you know what? When you drive in somebody else's car and like they're opening the door inside for you and uh, you're on the outside, right. so they're reaching the handle sure. at the same point you're yeah. pulling the handle yeah. and the pulls kind of Doesn't cancel each work. other right. out. Exactly. And you, you spend half an hour yeah. going, no, let go, let go, let go of yours, let go of yours. I'm going to stop that. Wait. 1990. It's That's a waste of energy. Good for you. It's annoying. It's very annoying. Uh, let's see. My two dads uh, on Wednesday night, and uh, things uh, there are going very well for Can you. Can summarize what didn't work? Well, maybe on your own time. Here we go. <laughs> uh, now, you don't feel I've ruined your appearance, do you? No. <laughs> and, and I think you will. Yeah, matter of fact, right now, let me go on record uh, uh, and invite you back one free one. Come, come back. <laughs> As opposed to getting paid for it. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, no, we'll pay you for it. Just come back. And, and, and okay. no risk to you. And no risk to me? <laughs> yeah, I'd that's like right. to see that happen, but I'll be here. And, and I'll just keep my mouth shut and you go on with your uh, little resolution. <laughs> All right? But what to say I'm back in April? There's no resolution. Okay. I Paul see. Reiser, ladies We're and gentlemen. Right. He'll be back in April. On Monday, ladies and gentlemen, the program will have uh, Sonny Bono, Teresa Russell, right there. Now, right there, that's reason to live. Teresa Russell yeah. will be on the show on Monday, and also Randy Newman. This sounds like a pretty good show, eh, Morty? It was a very yeah, it was a very good show. Uh, and coming up in this half hour, let's see, uh, Jimmy Cliff is going to be here. Uh, the world's oldest acrobats, Rinaldi and uh, Karina, will be joining us. And uh, Bjorn Nitmo, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Now, I if you're at home and you're saying to yourself, geez, we're just sick and tired of seeing Bjorn Nitmo on talk shows, well, let me mention something. He's going to be drilling footballs into the audience, all right? And I think we all know just how painful that can be. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last uh, program of the decade for us. So at this time, I would like to bring in a man who started the decade with us to help us usher in the brand new one. Please say hello to our good friend, Larry Budd. Yeah. Did you get a chance to say hello to Mr. Nitmo? No, I didn't. Oh, well, see that you, see, Maybe later. See that you do. He's here with Mrs. Nitmo. Oh, I'd like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Quite the ladies' man. Uh, well, Larry, it's been a great decade, hasn't it? Ah, oh, it's been wonderful, Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry is now going to read to you folks a special pledge prepared to explain this show's mission for the 1990s. Are you ready, Larry? Yes, Dave, I uh, have it right here. Okay, please read the pledge. Could I have some special lighting, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. We pledge skill, efficiency, and cleanliness in our pursuit of excellence. We promise to use no fillers or artificial ingredients or coloring. We pledge to inspect each carcass for insect larva and gangrene. We pledge to afford our animals clean pens and a high quality of life. Right up to the moment when we end their sorry lives with a wrap on their head from a steel mallet. Larry, you know, I'm sorry, but Larry, I don't, I don't think that sounds like the pledge uh, that we had in mind. Oh, my God. This is from my day job at the meat plant. Oh, no. It's a mix-up. Yes. <laughs> I've blown the end of the decade. Oh, no. I'm a moron. Yeah, well. I've single-handedly jinxed the next 10 years. <laughs> yeah. I'm a hopeless fool. Yeah, OK. Uh, Larry, how about a song? Oh, I'd love to, Dave. All right. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot in days of old anxiety?
I, I have got to switch to that medicated Tegrin. Look at this. It's confetti-sized dandruff. Uh, our next guest is one of the pioneers of reggae music and uh, the star of the film classic, The Harder They Come. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads, and kids of all ages, is his latest album entitled Images. Please welcome back to the program, Jimmy Cliff. <laughs> But you, uh, you originally were not going to be uh, with the Giants, and then what happened? Well, you know, I just came in and kicked and did my job and mm -hmm. took over. Yeah, that's right. But, but who, was, who was the kicker of, of the first choice, and then he was injured, hurt yeah. himself? Yeah. Who was Roll, that? Raul Allegra. Allegra. Yeah. That's right. So he, he hurt himself, you came in and took over and had the job ever yeah. since. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to continue with the team? Well, you know, we just have to wait and see. Yeah. You know? uh, where are you from? Sweden. Sweden is is Nitmo a common Swedish name? No, I'm the only one. You're the only Nitmo in Sweden. Yeah, it's well, you'd be a proud man for that alone. <laughs>
Uh, had you played much football in Sweden? No, I, uh, as a matter of fact, played my first game, or saw my first game that I played it. Is, is that right? Yeah. And, where, and where was that? In Enterprise, Alabama. In, in, so you played college football in Alabama? No, high school. High school? Yeah. And then you went on to play college ball there as well? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how, were you successful immediately as a kicker? Well, it, it took me a couple of the games to get a hold of what I was supposed to do, but uh -huh. after, you know, five games, I took over. Do you know anything at all about football? Well, I'm trying to pick up, you know, a little bit how you throw the ball. And... The truth of the matter is you could do what you do in street clothes, couldn't you? Probably. <laughs> yeah, you would save uniform money on you. I know it. Now, now, have you ever been, you've been dumped? You ever had anybody run into you? Ever been uh, in contact? It happens, you know, yeah. you just... And, and how do you feel it. about that? Oh, it's all right. I like to hit people, you know, when I get a chance. <laughs> All right, we're going to kick some here. You ready? Let's go. Stand by, Anton. Now, we, we have the uh, protective netting, all right? Now, do you want me to hold for you? Well, if you can. Is, you know. is there a secret to holding? Yeah. All right, how, how do I do that? Stay on the right side on me. Stay on the right side of you? No, left side. Left side. That's the right side on me. Okay, now, and how do I hold it? Just put the ball down. Right. Just like that, put your fingers on it. You don't want me to put my foot under there? No, and lean it a little bit like that. Okay. You know, like that. All right. All and right. you kick with your shoe off, huh? No, I keep my shoes on, but I don't kick in these shoes. I have, you know, special oh, shoes. Oh, those are his very special you know. shoes. Where I went to school, you know, <laughs> at Appalachia State, we can afford it. street shoes. Here we go. Yeah. Anton, get ready, folks. Protect yourselves. Here we go. What's the longest one you've ever kicked? Uh, 39 in pro. 39? Okay. Taking a run at it. Here we go. This one's for the kids. There it is. Yeah. This is, you know, this is all for charity. This is for Ball State Cardinals. You're in a Nitmo, ladies and gentlemen. I got one. I could do that. I've got the leg for that. You definitely I have, could do yeah, that. I have a one. feel for that. Got a nice one I could do it. Yeah, you could. Our next guests uh, met and married in 1936, and for the next 52 years, they toured England with their act. I could do that. Uh, these folks have come out of retirement now to brighten our holidays. Please welcome the world's oldest acrobats, Rinaldi and Karina. Kids? How do you do? Oh, Looked like you were going over for a chest x-ray. Yes, no, 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 no. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. <laughs> how, uh... <laughs> how, did, how did the two of you meet years and years ago? Uh, I worked in England, you mm -hmm. know. Yes. And I was in a baker's shop there. Right. And then he came up to London, where I was, uh -huh. and he was in a butcher shop. Mm -hmm. And he used to come over there for cups of tea. I see. see? Are you yeah, and, and, yeah. and how did you get to... How did you get together as uh, performers? Well, he had done it before. Uh -huh. And he asked me if I'd like to have a try. I see. So, and and do you enjoy there. working with him? Yeah, mostly. Mm -hmm. and, and when was... When, when was the last time the two of you appeared uh, professionally? Uh, 1957, 58. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 EastEnders. Yeah. Uh, EastEnders we did in Recently? May. Recently? 
in May. May. I see. And it went out in June. So, so now may I ask uh, how old you are and how old uh, your husband is? I'm 73. 73. 81. 81, 81. 81 years old. Yeah. Now, 81 is still going strong. Now, do you do you find that uh, it's uh, it's <laughs> is 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 it easy to be an acrobat? It's never easy to be acrobats, no, is it? Yeah, but I would yeah. think is it, is it harder at eighty one and, and seventy nine? It must be, of course. Well, well we don't do so much. Don't do so much. We used to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And and I guess you're going to show us a little of the performance yes, we here will. tonight. All right. We are will. we are we ready to see this? Okay. The world oldest acrobat. Rinaldi and Karina, take it away, Nice to meet you. Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Yes, that's plenty. Thank you. Good night, everybody.